Section 2.2, slope of a line and rate of change. So remember, slope, it's the change in y over the change in x. We know it as rise over run. Remember, it's the rise, the change in your y value over the change in the x, which is your run value. So for an example one, it says find the slope of the ladder against the wall. So they gave us a ladder leaning against the wall. Remember, it's rise over the run. So notice that they gave us a horizontal value of five and a vertical value of 15. So remember, rise is your vertical number over the horizontal number. So it's 15 over five, which is a three. So the slope, also known as M, is three feet, or three over one, if we're graphing. Slope formula occurs when you have two ordered points. So an x1, y1, and an x2, y2. So I gave the slope formula, slope, remember M is equal to the change in y over the change in x. So y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1, provided that if you do your x's, you do not result in zero. If you see the denominator become zero, that is called an undefined. So when we look at example two, it says find the slope of the line passing through the points one negative step, one negative one and seven two. So first thing, label them x1, y1, x2, y2. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write my equation for slope, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. When you replace the y values, the y1 and the x1, put the second half in parentheses in case there's a sign change. So we're going to write 2 minus minus 1 over 7 minus a1. The reason I did this is because sometimes you'll come into a situation where you have a minus minus situation. Minus minus means you are changing the values so you're adding now. And then we have 7 minus 1. We get 3 over 6, which reduces to 1 half. So the different types of slopes that we can have, we can have a positive slope. It means it increases or rises from the left to the right. So you're going from quadrant 3 to quadrant 1. Normally it's quadrant 3 towards quadrant 1. It's rising. Negative slope, it decreases or falls from the left to the right. So normally you're going from quadrant 2 down to quadrant 4. So it started up here in 2 and came down to 4. So it'll always be in a negative slope value. These are also have a negative sign attached to the values. Horizontal slope, it's known as slope equal to 0. It's horizontal slope means it's running parallel to the x-axis going through a y value. Vertical slope is known as your undefined slope. It's going parallel to the y-axis going through a x value. Example three says find the slope of the line passing through the points three negative four, negative five, negative one. So again, x one y one, x two, y two. You have your m equal y two minus y one over x two minus x one. So we get negative 1 minus a minus 4 over negative 5 minus a 3. Negative 1 plus 4, because it's a minus minus, negative 5 minus 3. So negative 1 plus 4 makes it positive 3. Negative 5 minus 3 is negative 8. So we end up with negative 3 eighths, which means we have a negative Slope. Example four, find the slope of a line passing through points negative three, four, and negative three, negative two. So again, we're going to label them x1, y1, x2, y2. 
So m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we see negative 2 minus 4, negative 3 minus a minus 3. So we get negative, negative 3 plus 3. This results in negative 6 over 0. And remember, 0 means undefined. So when we look at our original problem, um, notice that the x values are the same. So values of your ordered pairs are the same. You have an undefined slope. Example 5 says find the slope of a line passing through the points 0, 2, and negative 4, 2. Again, label them x1, y1, x2, y2. So we have m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, our slope formula. c2 minus 2 over negative 4 minus a0. And we end up with 2 minus 2 on top of negative 4, which is 0 over negative 4. When you're dividing by a number and zeros in the numerator, that's a 0. So we get a slope of 0. So when you notice, the y values are the same. So when the y values of the ordered pairs are the same, you have a zero slope. Now we're going to go in to talk about some parallel lines. Remember, parallel lines are lines that have the same slope and will never intersect. So when we're looking at the slopes, the slope of the first line is equivalent to the slope Perpendicular lines, on the other hand, are lines that have slopes that are negative reciprocals of each other. Lines intersect to form a 90 degree angle. So we see the slope of the first one is equivalent to the negative one over slope of the second one. And when you multiply them respectively, if you take the slope of the first one and the second one, you should end up with negative one as an answer. So in example six, it says the slope of the line one is negative four thirds. They want us to find the slope of a line parallel to line two. Remember, they use the word parallel. So the slope of line one must equal the slope of line two. So the new slope is still negative four over three. Part B says find the slope of a line perpendicular to line one. And they use the word perpendicular. Remember, line one is gonna be the negative one over line two. So we're basically taking our line one and it said negative four over three. Line two, switch the position. So I'm gonna write three over four. It was negative, you become positive. It's opposite of the sign, flip the situation. Example seven says, determine if the lines are parallel, perpendicular, neither. In order to know that, you need to find the slopes of each line to then compare. So we're gonna find the slope of line one. So x1, y1, x2, y2. We get 1 minus a minus 3 over 4 minus a2. 1 plus 3 over 4 minus 2. 4 over 2, which gives us a slope of 2. So that's what line 1 is. So line 1 slope is 2. Then you're going to try line 2. X, x1, y1, x2, y2. Repeat the situation. So we see negative 2 minus a minus 6 over negative 3 minus a 5. We get negative 2 plus 6 over negative 3 minus 5. 4 over negative 8, which reduces to negative 1 half. So... Slope of 2, slope of negative 1 half. 
Think of this as 2 over 1. And if I were to multiply 2 over 1 times negative 1 over 2, you get negative 1. So they are perpendicular.